Rents are dropping. Not by very much considering the condition of the economy and all of the unemployed people, but they're dropping. So we're going to talk about the falling rents today and the calls to cancel rent. Let's get into it. Start right here. San Diego rents down for the first time since the Great Recession. Average rent in San Diego County was about $1,850 per month in the second quarter. That's the end of June. And it is a year-over-year decline of a fraction of a percent, 0.3%, not a huge decline. It's still anyone's guess as how big the rent decline would have been if it were not for the cancellation of rents and the mortgage forbearances. Now, why do we look at mortgages in this scenario is because if landlords do evict tenants, they're going to have to try to find new tenants. If they're not able to find new tenants or cannot rent it out to cover the carrying costs, then you're also going to see big trouble with the landlords and their carrying costs, including a possible mortgage. And then that gets into the mortgage forbearances. So it's a big mess. It climbs all the way up the ladder, all the way up to the mortgage companies, the banks, and then up to the central bank as well. The biggest drops were downtown, down 2.2% year over year. University Town Center down 7.1% with all of the students being out of town or at home, probably with their parents. Uh, Del Mar, Encinitas, and Solana Beach all down over 4%. Mira Mesa, Sorrento Valley down over 4%. Meanwhile, rents went up a little bit over in East County and on the outskirts and in the suburbs of San Diego. Chula Vista, Imperial Beach actually up 3.1% year over year. National City up 3.4%. Poway and Santee both up 2.7%. All right, enough on San Diego. Let's go over to this national chart here. This is out of apartmentlist.com and you see the dark blue areas represent the spots or the cities locations with the biggest rent declines we go over to New York here and we see significant declines as we continue to see a perfect storm of people fleeing the cities uh, for many reasons job losses um, the social unrest and the riots that we're seeing in these cities and also people that still have jobs but are now allowed to work remotely so they're choosing to leave the expensive downtown areas and go in the outskirts and out into the country. Normally with this shutdown, this type of economic devastation and job losses, this would have crushed the housing market including rents. But even with all of the assistance that's going on right now, the canceled rents and the forbearance on the mortgages, we're still seeing declining rents in some of the higher priced areas. San Francisco down 3.3%. These are year over year numbers by the way for a two bedroom, the median price. Uh, New York, New York down 2.8%, San Jose, California 2.2%, Orlando, Florida 2.1%, Miami, Florida 2%, DC 1.7%, Austin, Texas 1.6%, Charlotte, North Carolina 1.5%, Boston, Massachusetts 1.4%, Houston, Texas also 1.4% decline. Speaking of San Francisco, a lot of those tech workers have chosen to go to Lake Tahoe. There's a report here says uh, Lake Tahoe is running out of homes, says a mortgage broker there, as so many tech workers are fleeing the Bay Area. So we're going to see prices likely rise big time in Lake Tahoe, which is a big destination choice for tech workers leaving the Bay Area. Uh, Forbes also got in on this discussion here with this article on Newsflash to Landlords. Rent isn't coming, right? When the forbearance ends, when the cancel rent, when the cancel rent period ends, where are these tenants going to come up with the money? They're not going to be able to pay the past due rent and they're not even going to be able to continue to pay the rent going forward in the near future. Right? We have permanent job losses and this article points out this and a few other facts. Uh, but there's no going back to pre-shutdown uh, conditions. I know there's a lot of news out there saying it's going to be a V-shaped recovery and they're pointing to a lot of false indicators and manipulated data uh, but the facts are the facts and at least Forbes is coming out with some common sense information about this. Uh, we have a lot of posts on Twitter chiming in on this hashtag cancel rent. Uh, many people just want free rent because it's not their fault that the shutdown has happened. Uh, the following was tweeted out by HCC hashtag cancel rent. The court is taking down our tags. Each tag represents three families facing immediate risk of eviction. We won't stop fighting for cancel rent and eviction-free New York. And just as we said what happened several months ago, the protests have now turned into an economic protest with this one here. 
out of uh, at SCZ. Uh, holding it down at cancel rent protesters calling for end to evictions amid pandemic black Louisville intersection with furniture. I think we're going to see a lot more of these protests now evolving into a housing and financial and economic protest, just as we said it would. There's a lot of, right, and I've said this before, but police brutality was the spark, but now months and months and months of people not working behind on their rent and such massive unemployment, this could turn into something much darker and much more dangerous, especially when you have more people starving, more people that are going to be homeless, uh, more people upset at landlords, like you see in this picture right here. Right, but here's the thing about cancel rent. Again, it's not that simple. This is going to have to go up to the mortgages and the landlords. They still have carrying costs. So people saying cancel rent, also you have to factor in cancel mortgage, cancel taxes, cancel utilities. You have to cancel everything if you cancel rent because that's, again, the income for the landlords that have to pay for a lot of these things, including HOA fees, uh, maintenance and upkeep, you name it. So you have to cancel everything. All right, cancel utilities, cancel taxes, on and on and on. It's insane times that we're living in here. On the lighter side, here's one here with this uh, pick here, how much selling stuff because rent is due. But also this individual here, I uh, tweeted out the following. Turns out my landlord is pissed at the prospect of telling her I don't know when I can pay rent. Too bad she has my security deposit. Says she'll be speaking to her lawyer six plus weeks for a simple repair LOL. We'll be speaking to my lawyer in less than 20 minutes. Right? The courts are backlogged. Any legal eviction could likely drag on for months and months. Uh, and it could get ugly, even uglier than this right here. And by the time this is done, the housing and economic protests could be bigger than what sparked this whole thing with the police brutality. Here's another one here. In-person housing trails start at 320 J Street in Brooklyn. Members refuse to legitimize the eviction mill and demand cancel rent. And you can see the big line of people here in front of the courthouse. Uh, folks, I hate to see what's going to happen when people start missing meals, when more people get evicted. Uh, when people are desperate, it gets really dangerous. And I uh, hope everybody's well out there. Be careful. Let me know what you think about this. Uh, what's the solution? I mean, you have to cancel everything if you cancel rent because someone has to pay for uh, the property upkeep. right? Is there a solution or should we all be preparing for absolute meltdown, Mad Max, uh, survival of the fittest? type of environment here in the U.S. Let me know. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, have a good rest of the weekend. Might not be putting out a report on, uh, on Sunday, tomorrow, but I'll see you early in the week here. Hope everybody's well. Bye for now.